Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vago Maradian. Last week, we visited the Canadian Embassy for a panel discussion commemorating the 60th anniversary of the North American Aerospace Defense Command established during the Cold War to defend the United States and Canada from attack against what was then the Soviet Union. The command remains relevant today to coordinate the defense of both nations against a range of international and homeland threats. The event was co-hosted by the Wilson Center think tanks Canada Institute and the Canadian Embassy. While there, we spoke with retired Royal Canadian Air Force General Tom Lawson, the former Canadian Deputy Commander of NORAD and the former Chief of Canada's Armed Forces. We asked them about the command's legacy, its role in deterring Russia, and the unique air defense relationship between the United States and Canada. I think it's important for any peer threats around the world to know that there is an organization watching all the time, watching from space, uh, watching from ground-based radar, watching all the time for any hint of threat that may come towards North America. There's the deterrence. Uh, the second half of that deterrence, of course, is what might you do about that? And if you have aircraft or missiles in the air, uh, then NORAD uh, is set to respond with fighters, uh, uh, with refuelers for those fighters, uh, and with missiles as required, or ballistic missile defense for a, a portion of NORAD headquarters, the American portion of NORAD headquarters. Uh, and that's the deterrence uh, portion. The detect really is a very technological thing that requires a, a network of, uh, of sensors uh, around the planet and on the planet. Uh, and then the defeat part that we've talked about a little little bit, that's, that's the teeth of NORAD, and those are the fighters that are sitting at uh, dozens of places around North America uh, with fighter pilots set to get off the ground within uh, minutes in order to, uh, uh, to, to defeat whatever may come towards the, the uh, continent. It's interesting having come from uh, an Air Force fam family. My grandfather was a uh, First World War fighter pilot, my father was a Second World War fighter pilot. And, for much of my career, I was a fighter pilot. NORAD is an extension, or really became an extension in the uh, 60s of uh, fighter pilot duties. Uh, so I've got a link uh, family-wise and Air Force-wise that, uh, that really speaks to the very heart of NORAD responsibilities. It was such a thrill to be down there in, uh, uh, in the United States with our American friends, along with 150 Canadians at that headquarters. Russia is a peer threat. Uh, there's no doubt about it that in the late 1950s, it was, it was a result of the Russian threat threat that NORAD uh, was stood up. Uh, there are other peer threats around the world that are coming. The Russians uh, uh, are now advertising uh, capability improvements. Uh, so they continue to be a peer threat, uh, but NORAD's a little bit less um, focused on nations and more focused on any sort of threats out there uh, that could come through aerospace or maritime. Uh, and so it's less about countries out there and more about making sure uh, that your sensors are all linked together for any nation that may consider attacking our continent. It's difficult to prioritize them because their priority will be based on the threat that they present uh, to, uh, to the continent. So whereas today a, uh, a, an interballistic, intercontinental ballistic missile may present the greatest threat, uh, tomorrow hints or indications that there may be uh, uh, a, a ballistic missile coming on board a ship towards the nation would put that at top priority. So I think it's a very difficult uh, uh, question to say this is what we need to focus on today. I think what NORAD really has to do is make sure all of their networks of sensors are always very well connected uh, and that the people who then warn our most senior politicians and defense uh, decision makers uh, need to be connected to that system and that needs to be practiced time and time again as I saw it was when I was deputy commander and I know it is through to today. NORAD's role in uh, a maritime defense is maritime warning, maritime awareness. So again, as we spoke about for aerospace defense, we've got to make sure, we've got to, I, I speak like a deputy commander, a former deputy commander would say that uh, NORAD needs to ensure uh, that its maritime sensors uh, are all linked up in such a way that it will get the uh, information it needs to make an early detection of a threat and then again to be able to upline the, the, the 
most important information about that threat so that our decision makers can decide how to respond and recognize it won't be NORAD responding in that case, it will be elements of the U.S. Navy, uh, the Canadian Navy, or maybe in uh, an asymmetric way, um, one of our nations will decide to, to respond. The binational agreement that uh, underpins NORAD is unique uh, around the world. There are no two other countries. Many have bilateral relationships, but nobody has a binational relationship. So the question really is, what is that? And what it means is that we've ceded sovereignty to each other. For NORAD uh, aerospace defense purposes, there is no requirement for authority beyond what's in the agreement to fly American flagged aircraft across the Canadian border or into Canadian aerospace uh, and vice versa, Canadian aircraft uh, to protect uh, North American uh, defense. That's a remarkable thing and it shows a very high level of trust uh, between Americans and Canadians uh, and it makes, uh, it really facilitates all of those things that NORAD has to do uh, to defend uh, North American aerospace. I think that uh, Canadians and Americans have a tremendous amount of fellow feeling because uh, we're, we're uh, brought up in much the same way. Good, strong education, a belief in rights, uh, and uh, um, uh, compassion uh, for others throughout the world uh, based on uh, an awareness of how much we've been blessed to be in uh, these two nations. Um, so it, it really is very easy to find uh, um, unity of purpose, unity of mind in, in how we go forward. And, and, and I think that NORAD's a very strong reflection that has been for 60 years now and will continue to be for many more. The advice I would give is to continue to lever uh, the greatest value that NORAD brings us. And that is a seamless organization that's linked from those sensors across the ground uh, uh, that feed into the headquarters quarters uh, and uh, sensors that are out in space um, linked up through the people to a warning system uh, that is really uh, we use the metaphor a quick twitch muscle to advise our uh, most important uh, decision makers about that and I think uh, that if if NORAD commanders and deputy commanders and all the personnel recognize that that's one of the most important facets uh, then I think NORAD will continue to be extremely important in years to come.